Hey y'all. I think we need to talk about Heart of Inmost Light. Yeah. I think we need to. Mainly because y'all been asking me about it. Much like people were asking me about resilience. Should it get nerfed? Will Bungie nerf it? Let's talk. I want to discuss why Bungie might choose to target Heart of Inmost Light if they do end up nerfing it. Let me reiterate. This video is... Do you think Bungie is going to nerf Heart of Inmost Light? It is not. I think Heart of Inmost Light should get nerfed. So put down your pitchforks, or at the very least, don't point them at me. Heart of Inmost Light has made it into the hearts, kill me, of Titans around the world. Mostly in thanks to the 3.0 subclass updates, specifically Arc 3.0 and the Touch of Thunder build. Before these updates, Heart of Inmost Light got a little bit of attention, especially when it got some quality of life updates late last year, but not nearly as much because cooldowns were not able to get as crazy as they can with 3.0 subclasses. Aspects, fragments, mods, perks, you name it, we got it. Arc 3.0 has truly shown what Heart of Inmost Light is capable of with the Storm Grenade build absolutely annihilating all content in the game, and I do literally mean all content. While Stasis has been slightly power crept out of the game by the ability to outright murder everything in sight versus crowd controlling it, it also benefits from Heart of Inmost Light because of the Elemental Shards mod turning shards into elemental wells, giving tons of energy, which is what allows you to chain combo a lot smoother. While Solar has the ability to go basically immortal with Lorelei's, it too can benefit greatly from Heart of Inmost Light thanks to Soul Invictus, aka Sunspots. And while Void is a bit more tame when it comes to destruction, there's nothing that really comes close to what Heart can supply in terms of ability output for Void setups. As we discussed recently, you can go infinite with Collective Obligation now, and Heart of Inmost Light basically ensures it. Now I've heard some discussion here and there talking about the build itself, people saying, oh, it's Touch of Thunder that's the problem. People saying Elemental Wells are the problem. And I think we could say that almost anything is the problem. Touch of Thunder, Wells, Spark of Magnitude. But Heart of Inmost Light is sort of at anarchy levels of good, where it is oppressively good. Where it dominates so hard that to bring anything above Heart of Inmost Light in terms of power would probably be irresponsible levels of power creep. Let's take a look at exotics that regenerate ability energy. How about we start with Point Contact Cannon Brace, very new to the game. This exotic should be the I'm gonna thunderclap everything exotic, but it's not because Heart of Inmost Light enables extremely high uptime on your melee, not to mention buffing its damage considerably and giving you a similar effect that Point Contact gets. Point Contact Cannon Brace is also just kind of really bad in its own right and deserves some buffs, like a lot of them. But think about how much you would need to buff it to be equal or better than Heart of Inmost Light. Skullfort definitely does have some build potential, but ease of use is a factor with Heart of Inmost Light as well. A Skullfort build takes a bit more effort and setup to pull off, a bit more finesse, while also introducing a little more risk. Also, Skullfort is a better point contact cannon brace than point contact cannon brace for like 99% of the game. If Heart of Inmost Light is safer and easier, most people are going to stick with it. But picking Skullfort doesn't make you non-viable or anything like that. How about Horfrost Z? This one's a bit of a stretch, but I'd argue that Heart is still just as effective with the stasis build that I posted months ago as Horfrost Z is. Horfrost turns your barricade into an ice wall that you can shatter for more ability energy. You can't really increase the damage of a grenade that does no damage, I understand, but you still gain a lot of ability energy from it. Halifire Heart is an exotic that buffs your ability uptime at the cost of being unable to use your super. Well, okay, you're not not allowed to super, but if you use it, the potency of Halifire Heart drops. That's the trade-off you make. Ability uptime goes through the roof, but if you use your super, you're not as effective until you get your super back. With Heart of Inmost Light, we still get to use our super very freely. We are not restricted. Not only that, but Heart of Inmost Light's potency is even stronger than Halifier when empowered as proc'd, 
and it can currently be procced nearly 100% of the time on your abilities if you're playing well. Halifire does have the edge in that you don't need any sort of effect to trigger your exotic, at least part of it, but Heart's exotic power isn't really hard to get rolling. Even stuff like Doomfang Pauldron, what does that have to do with anything? They augment your super. Yeah. And although this is another problem altogether, there's a reason people opt for one-off supers instead of roaming supers in PvE right now. That's because our neutral game is so strong that there's no need for roaming supers in PvE. If Solar Titan had a one-off super, we'd be using it. Is there a build that can get you a super long Sentinel Shield super? Yeah, does it take a lot more effort to make happen? Yeah, is it as good as just putting on Heart of Inmost Light? Eh? Then we have some more irrelevant exotics, Kepri's Horn, Master of the Quiet One, etc, etc. These never stood a chance anyway. The only things that I think can stand up to Heart of Inmost Light are Lorelei and Phoenix Cradle, maybe. Lorelei provides a very strong, automatically triggering effect that can proc very often, allowing players who aren't too aware of their surroundings to stay alive with basically no problem. And I personally just like Phoenix Cradle as a support option, but if you're by yourself, it's not really that important, and it's also not really that important overall. Notice that I'm covering exotics across multiple subclasses. That's because Heart of Inmost Light works on all abilities on all subclasses. With the sandbox we have right now, with the ability to go infinite on your abilities, why wouldn't you? Why intentionally cripple yourself with an exotic that doesn't do as much or can't do as much? This is a similar problem to Anarchy back when Anarchy got nerfed. Anarchy was so strong that it actively oppressed other exotics from use simply because they weren't efficient enough, strong enough, whatever enough to compete with Anarchy. Anarchy could quite literally do everything. Boss damage, AoE ad clear. It was around in a meta where people were able to use all three of their weapon slots for boss damage, double slug shotguns. It was great single target. And as can happen, when something is too good at too many things at once, those things tend to get looked at. Even Divinity, took three years, was subject to revision. Heart of Inmost Light is not in a very different place right now. It oppresses other options pretty dramatically. What about all of the other parts? Touch of Thunder on its own wouldn't be that crazy if it weren't for Spark of Magnitude, which dramatically increases the duration of Storm Grenade. Part of why everyone uses Storm Grenade is, yeah, damage, but it also tracks. It has built-in insurance. But the kicker is the uptime. There are minimal trade-offs you need to make. The concept of strong ability with long cooldown or weak ability with short cooldown, it's pretty easy to understand. Heart of Inmost Light gives strong ability with very short cooldown. It is the frequency, strength as well, at which you are able to do something like a double duration empowered tracking Storm Grenade that is potentially the problem Bungie would attempt to address. If Storm Grenade didn't feel like it was on a 10 to 15 second cooldown, maybe this wouldn't be as big of a deal. Targeting something like Spark of Magnitude directly may be a route to take, but that ruins things for the other classes and they didn't do anything wrong. Targeting well mods is possible, as the wells and ionic traces generated also contribute to the speed at which you are able to use abilities. Targeting Storm Grenade itself is also an option, but again, that affects all classes, not just Titans. You would probably need to adjust Storm Grenade for Titans specifically, but that leaves every other subclass unaffected. We're not just talking about Arc Titans here, although they certainly benefit the most right now. I think Bungie could take a look at the ability to spawn multiple wells at once, although that's pretty fun to do and takes a somewhat significant armor energy investment to make happen. But Heart is kind of what brings it all together. Short cooldowns, boosted damage, and it's viable everywhere. That is why it might get targeted. What sucks though, is that this gameplay loop is really fun and having abilities that deal this insane damage when comboed correctly is really satisfying. It's a double-edged sword. It's really fun, but part of the fun comes from the fact that you are deleting every enemy in sight without any sort of resistance. I imagine most of you don't see that as a problem, and in the short term, I don't think it is. If Bungie wanted to leave this as is to let people have fun for a little bit, sure, 
whatever, no big. But it does limit the design space for Bungie, knowing that anything they come up with is either going to be terrible garbage or insanely overpowered with nothing in between, as Titans are currently experiencing. It limits build crafting too, everything just comes down to use Heart of Inmost Light, and that's not very interesting, even if it is ridiculously strong. I think the only other exotic I've really equipped recently is Aeon Safe, and that's because it makes guaranteed power ammo, which is one of the best effects in the entire game. So, yeah, those are my thoughts on whether or not Bungie nerfs Heart of Inmost Light. Right now, it certainly fits the bill for something that is problematic as far as the sandbox goes, but there are certainly chances that Bungie opts to adjust the Storm Grenade build itself that Titans are currently running versus hitting Heart of Inmost Light. It's up to Bungie on how to handle it, but considering we haven't heard anything from them quite yet, I imagine this build is safe for the rest of the season at a minimum, and potentially until Lightfall. After that, we'll see. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.